Welcome to Weld.com. I had a student with me this morning, Mr. Clayton Lesser. Clayton, this is his second year. Actually, it's his last semester. Is it your last semester? Yeah. I can't keep track, y'all. <laughs> y'all just come and go, man. Um, and one of the viewer questions, I think it was, um, what, what procedures do we get into? What welding procedures do we get into? Well, we do a little bit of everything. Uh, stick, nick, tick. Uh, we do horizontal, vertical, a little bit of overhead. But we're doing, I mean, we start out doing the process itself <clears throat> so that it's understood. We're studying the electrodes, the polarities, uh, everything involved with the machine setup. We, when we get to procedure type work, which was specifically was the viewer question, I believe, we're doing stuff on plate and pipe so that we can simulate field conditions. Uh, we're setting our grooves up. If we're running an uphill with 60-10, 70-10, the root face and gap, the amperage, probably a little bit different than downhill, is it not? Yeah. Downhill, we're running hot yeah. and we're not messing around about it. Uh, we do combinations, and we'll, we'll do a procedure that's all 60-10 or 70-10 all the way out downhill. And we do a lot of that on pipe. Uh, we'll do a lot of uphill procedures with combination of 60-10 and low hydrogen, right? Yeah. Okay. So we like to, you know, here at the college, we will do our training coupons, our materials. We'll grade the weld visually. Sometimes we'll go x-ray it. Sometimes we'll bend test it depends on you know how close we are uh, in our in our skill competency set here and then we'll cut the weld out reclaim the material and keep keep working it down I believe there was a, a viewer that asked and needed some help on a 6010 downhill route you know do it on plate real quick it's easier to show for camera angles for the viewers so we have some 3 8 plate we've got them beveled to 30 degrees and what did you, did you put a root face on these? I did. About a 16th, 332? Yeah. Like you would see normally on piping or whatever. And then we've got a pretty skinny gap in here. What is that? About a 16th? It's pretty tight. About a 16th, okay. Well, let's get you set up. We're gonna run off the ESOB Rebel 235. Powerful little rascal. We, we, we ran it a little bit. It'll be your first time to pull the trigger on this, huh? That's right. All right. Now, we said that you'd been with us for, uh, this is your second year, so after, after your first full year, what'd you do? You go do some, were you farming or were you doing some construction work or what were you doing? I was actually a welder for a TCI. Uh, I did some tests for them and we did a horizontal, a vertical, and an overhead, but we also had the back couch. Oh, for a full pin? Yeah. Okay, that was part of their procedure. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you you did that all summer long and went out and made some jack, huh? Were you getting some dollars there? Yeah, that was pretty good. Money. I noticed you didn't come back and take your old instructor out to dinner. <laughs> uh, what were you making? About 35, 38 bucks an hour? 36, 50 an hour. That's not bad, after one year? Yeah. So is some of the stuff that I taught you work out in the field? Yeah. Oh, it did, really? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's good to know. Uh, all right, let's, uh, I'm gonna set this up for the camera angle here for, you're a righty, huh? Yep. So, is that comfortable for you right there? Looks good. What else you need? Some gloves. Let me get you set up here. Turn your machine on for you. You like 85 amps, you like 80? Tell you what, if you don't like it while you're into that weld, holler at me and I'll be your, I'll be your helper. I'll turn you down, up or, up or down, five, 10, whatever you need. I'm gonna go grind your start and stop out. I'll be right back.
goes too fast. I had turned you up two amps. It didn't look like you were quite getting through on the back side. kind of burnt the rod got going off to one side we don't need that um, okay so if we were going to correct that what do we do grind it out. gotta go grind it all out and then you're going to have to restart and make sure that you need to make sure that we're getting that keyhole equally on both sides when the rod jumps to one side you've probably seen me I'll stick it in there so hard and I'll, I'll just barely wiggle it back and forth but I want that keyhole running on both sides of the bevel face so let me go grind that out for you okay I need you to start up above this let the rod let the arc get established set it down on top of that reestablish the keyhole and finish that up Move on down. There you go. Stick it in there. I did turn you up to 90. Let me go clean this up and we'll take a look at the back side and see what we got. We got a problem. The last time I ground you out, uh, I may not have ground you out thin enough. I did turn you up five more amps, but on our restart, we didn't tie in here to our previous bead. So you can see this right here, we're showing an edge. Yeah. Okay, can't have that. Remember when we got into piping? Plate's one thing. We're not worried about the first half inch on the plates or whatever. Everything in between is gradable, but when we get to pipe, what are the rules? 100% root cannot leave anything behind in there that's like that. We have to have an attempt. So let, I'm gonna grind that out real thin and I need you to go back in and stitch that and see if we can't blend it, okay? Um, we've done a lot of roots. We fly down through here. I'll run one here in a minute and you can watch and see if I'm doing it something different that in technique, rod angle, travel speed, something that uh, we can pick up on. Uh, but we've we've done some stuff. We've we've shot some X-rays. We've repaired them and reshot the X-ray to show a difference. And now we want to start showing how to repair stuff like that. I mean, number one thing, we don't want to leave it behind. But it happens. Yeah. I mean, we're human. At least I am. Yeah. I like I stick rods. Yeah. I you know I'm good at I it. Didn't. I didn't. I noticed that you started right up and just went right That's into right. it. Let me go grind you out there, G. I'll be right back. Check this out. I, uh, I took the eighth inch grinding blade and I stuck it down in there and cleaned this out a lot, okay? I also, while I was in there, I started re-beveling this. You know it's thin. You saw what was there. What we need you to do is, I'm gonna leave you on the same amperage. Need you to start way up here and it's almost like you're running a, a hop pass. You stitch that just a little bit, you bring it down. If this thing opens up, don't don't worry about it. Just keep the rod in there and keep blending it together. Okay. Keep working it down and push. When you tie in below it down here into a good metal again, keep pushing on the rod so that you don't leave that horseshoe looking thing on the back side. Okay? Let's get your gear on. Let's go. Okay, hold a close arc right there. There it is. Now keep pushing. Keep pushing and stitching and keep going. There you go. See, I've got my keyhole right above the rod that's filling in. It looks like a little V.
hit a little wide open spot in the middle. I think we need to check our uh, burn table over there, straighten these up a little bit. So, wasn't jumping from side to side. It tried to, I noticed it tried to right down here. So that might be something we can work on here, a little rod technique. So from here, we'd clean this up and we would run our hot pass procedures, which would be turn it up to like a 115, 120. Yeah. Stitch, long arc, stitch, long arc to blow that up and lay it in there flat. I hope this helps. I think what the viewer was having problems with, if I had to guess, he didn't specifically name, he said it was blowing up. So my guess is we're not holding a short enough arc. On a downhill route, stick that rod in there and go. If you, there's a lot of good information. Uh, there's a lot of good videos of guys running pipeline stuff, and you'll notice, I mean, I, when I'm comfortable and I'm doing a lot of pipe work and we're going, I'll stick that rod in there and put it into the joint pretty much to the point where it bends. I mean, we're sticking it in there. Uh, I think we did some stuff outside one time and it was going in so good we just raised our hood. You don't need to look at it. That's kind of a smart aleck thing to do, but hey, when it's going good, it's going good. Yeah. Again, let's watch the arc not jumping side to side. So I hope this helps. I hope this satisfied the viewer comment that was having trouble. Short arc, watch your keyhole around your rod. It should be filling right above it when you're running downhill about 90, 95 amps, depending on what your machine's doing. DC EP, electrode positive, reverse polarity. Thanks for watching weld.com. Make sure you subscribe to the videos. New videos come out every Monday. Thank you.